talk about UCP of Sacramento in Northern California, when you come into our office or in a lot of our uh, events that we have, you're often presented with this positioning statement. Steve and Doug um, and myself and, and the leadership and boards have worked together to put together this statement, which reads, UCP of Sacramento in Northern California is a leading provider of comprehensive services to children and adults with all developmental disabilities and their families. UCP works with 55,730 people a month in our eight-county area, empowering children and adults who, without support, would be isolated from the community. This statement best represents UCP as it is today. Now, obviously, a lot goes into this. So we're going to unpack this statement and learn everything that comes into it. But a big question is really how we got here. So in a new employee orientation, I, I tell this story. Um, UCP was founded in 1955. So if we went back to 1955 and you put yourself into the position of the founding parents who started UCP, and let's go back to that first doctor's visit where they go to the doctors, probably after several years of consultations, try to understand what makes their child different and some of the challenges they're facing. And in that doctor's visit, the doctor says, you know, we have some good news um, and maybe some hard news. The good news is we have a, a definitive diagnosis. We know now what we're dealing with. This child, your child, you know, Johnny or Amelia, um, you know, they have cerebral palsy or they have autism, they have an intellectual disability. This is just who they are. This is who they will be for the rest of their life. And now it's about learning your child and um, the challenges that come with your child. Every person I've ever met who um, has a child with a disability talks about how in that moment all of your dreams and expectations start being rewritten. Does my child still go to college? Does my child still go um, to live on their own? Are, are, you know, is my child um, going to be okay when I die? All of a sudden different expectations come and, and you're rewriting your hopes and dreams for the children. Now imagine in that moment the doctor also telling you that you're, you should start to prepare yourself that before your child turns 18, you're likely going to need to place them permanently in a state institution. On the right, you see uh, a picture of Sonoma Developmental Center, the closest state institution here. That you will be putting your child in the inpatient for the rest of their life. They will live and die there. They may take a box of their personal belongings. And you'll have visitor rights as a parent. But this is what you should do as a good parent for your children. You should start to prepare. And I ask our new employees, I say, I want you to imagine how much convincing I need to do as a doctor to make you feel like this is the right choice. And the answer is, I don't know how I'll ever feel good about this choice. So this is how UCP got started. Family said no, family said we want options. Eventually the state realized that the services are higher quality and lower cost in the community and they created the community services that we have today. So that's how UCP was founded in uh, uh, 1955. So today we have over 19 distinct programs that we operate here at UCP. And 19 programs are a lot. It's hard to keep track of them all um, for a board member or for consumers or families. So of these 19 programs, we talk about four divisions that these programs fall into. The first is our respite services. This is in-home care and support um, delivered by our workers every day out in the communities, out in homes. <clears throat> we have adult programs. These are primarily comprised of 10 facility-based adult day programs, which we've talked about. These are 10 individual programs um, at five different facilities throughout Sacramento. But we also have a tailored day program and an independent living program that we provide. The third division is our transportation program. This can pop for transportation division. This comprises three programs, UCP transportation, which is large buses that go on fixed routes, smaller minivans through a special contract with paratransit that says on-demand rides, and every, rarely we do community transportation. So this is taking kids up to snow camp. This is first tee. These are just one-off trips that we do to support the community. Our fourth and final division is our recreation and therapy division. This currently composes of ACE, our ABA program, Battle Pals and ACE Camp. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at each of these divisions, the programs and services that they offer, as well as the statistics that make these programs unique. First, we're going to talk about respite, one of our most well-known programs. Respite is a service that provides in-home care and supervision for families. What that means is that we're sending workers out from the community, almost always into somebody's home, to provide care and supervision for a child with a developmental disability. Most of the time, it's the children under age 18, but it also can be adult children living in the home. When you go back to that family in the doctor's office, trying to figure out how to keep their child at home and what they need, 
I asked our staff, what do you think the first thing they asked for was? And the answer is the same thing every new parent asks for, which is, I just need a little help. I need help doing the dishes. I need help doing running errands. I need help. I need some time to sleep. I just need a little help. So respite really has been the foundation of this service industry from the very beginning, making sure that our families that are caring with a child with disabilities and all the increased stress and work that that entails have the support at home so we keep families together. A couple of key things for this program, and we're going to talk about this as we move to each division, matching is very important. Matching a worker with a family, the right worker with the right family, or workers, plural. That's really important for a good relationship. Respite is also UCP's fastest growing program. As we move into each division, we're going to talk about the number of clients and the number of service hours. Clients are unique individuals that participate in this program for clients. Service hour is an hour of service a client receives in this program, so an hour of respite service. Respite has 20% of our total clients, which is uh, almost 1,600 clients that participate in Respite. And total, 232,000 hours, or about 28% of our total service hours. That's not a typo. It's 28 and it's 28. So a little over a quarter of our services go to Respite. Here's a quick map if you're familiar with the heat map. The, the red and orange areas represent high, highly density, density yeah. Yeah dense locations of families that are receiving services. The blue is less family. So you can see where our families are concentrated throughout the region. We share some stats that separate out rested in particular. I mentioned it's our fastest growing program. We've had a 5.8% increase in families over last year. We've also increased our service hours by 8.1%. So not only have more families joined, but families are using more services in respite this year. The most common diagnosis among our respite families is autism at 62%. And I want you to pay attention to this because this is going to change as we move from program to program. Second highest is intellectual disability with uh, cerebral palsy coming in at 7%. And the majority of folks served by respite are children. 76% of respite families are children. The next that we want to talk about is our adult day program. As I mentioned before, we have 10 licensed day programs. We have an independent living program and a tailored day program. These are all adults participating in these programs. And the types of folks and the types of disabilities and challenges that they, um, that we serve, are very different from respite. So we're going to watch a quick video. for that wonderful video. If you looked and paid attention during the video, not only did you see a client experiencing something for the first time, in this case a virtual reality, um, not video, game, I don't know what to call it, experience, where he's riding a roller coaster. If you can imagine folks with significant disabilities, that's an experience they only hear about. So for him to look around and get that sense was pretty amazing. In fact, people kept trying to talk to him and he couldn't process anything outside of that video. So adult day programs are licensed. Uh, by a couple different agencies. They're facility-based, or at least UCP programs are, so you would have seen the facility in those videos uh, to serve up to about 50 clients in, per program. The clients you saw have really significant support needs. These are folks that are, um, uh, have, are at least are some of the most significant uh, disabilities that, for any day programs out there. You saw a group program, so this is a group program clients are participating in, and group staffing. Day program clients represent 7% of our total clients, about 427, and about 50% or 49% of our service hours, over 400,000 service hours. The reason is these 427 clients are generally coming to program five days a week, 
six hours a day, so they're receiving a lot of services. We have uh, these five locations. We have one in Woodland. We have one in Rancho Cordova. That's our new Odyssey program. We have a location in uh, Sacramento uh, off Lathrop that serves our SAGE program. And we have a North Highlands location serving four programs and a Orange Grove location serving three adult pay programs. When you look at the clients served by adult programs, you see a very different mix. 51% of our clients are nonverbal, meaning that, that they may not be able to communicate at all or may need to communicate through gestures, um, eye movements, um, or some other types of communication device. 50%, again, not a, not, that, that's correct. 50% of our folks are non-ambulatory, which means that they are in a wheelchair. Um, and another 14% of those are fragile um, ambulators. That means that they may need a staff to walk with them. They may be sitting in a wheelchair for parts of the day. They'll have a cave. In this case, 61% of these folks, their primary diagnosis is an intellectual disability, as opposed to over 62% in respite. So a big difference of the types of disabilities for these programs. And 27% of the clients that we serve in those programs have an advanced medical condition, or what we call a restricted health condition, which means that they need a medical professional on site for them to even participate in educational activities. The third division that UCP operates is our transportation division. This consists of UCP transportation, which are these large buses that you see here. It also includes paratransit type shuttles, like in the top right of this photo. This is a special contract with paratransit where we're handling overflow for them, and they can we generally drive those smaller vehicles, and it's called on-demand on service. So it's a one-way trip that's scheduled for a particular purpose, whereas the large vehicles are doing fixed routes. So they're running the same route every day, again, generally taking people five days a week to a program at home. So currently, UCP operates 33 fixed routes. We have about 45 buses that are we have in service through our fixed route service. And we have 25 on-demand shuttle routes. So the way this, these, this service serves clients and serves ours is a bit unique. UCB transportation only accounts for about 9% of our clients, because those, and those clients, though, are on buses about five days a week. So they're getting a lot of reoccurring service through UCP throughout the year. So those 9% of clients are receiving 18% of our total service hours. The shuttle service does a lot of one-way trips. So we have a lot of individuals served by that program. So currently, they represent 55% of our client count, but only about 4% of the service hours because these are generally one-time, maybe a 30-minute one-way trip to a location. Some stats for transportation. We don't normally have diagnosis information, uh, so I don't know all the details for the folks that come on and on the bus, but we do know uh, miles driven. We've driven uh, almost 16 I'm sorry, 1.6 million miles this year between those two programs. Again, transportation department is the dark blue, shuttle is the light blue. We've done almost 200,000 individual trips uh, between those two buses. You know, those translate to about 780 trips per day on and off our vehicles, and over 6,000 miles driven a day combined by our two programs. And collectively, it is about 180,000 service hours. You know, if you think about it, we talk about a full-time work is uh, 2,080 hours. Right. So use that for comparison. Your job, if you're working 40 hours a week, which some of us don't, is about 2,000 hours. Um, and this program alone does 180,000 hours. The last program that we want to talk about today is our therapy and recreation department division. This includes ACE. ACE Camp and Saddle Pals. When we talk about clients and service hours, they really only represent 1% of our clients, or 47 clients, and 1% of our service hours, 5,100 hours. But the impact of these programs is not well represented by a, a percentage alone. Uh, these folks are receiving really significant services in the community, and it's something that's always been a power part of UCP and always will be. Um, you see here a picture of our ACE program where kids are learning socialization skills and communication skills with an after school type program. You see in the top right our saddle pals program, which is therapeutic horseback riding uh, for folks with all types of disabilities, and of course our ACE camp. And I have to show you a video about our ACE camp. So 
We're going to get one more video here. Just a minute. say thank you again for Steve. He puts together those videos and they, they're just a fantastic short overview of what we do. So again, those these three programs represent about 1% collectively of our client count and our service hours. So now that we've talked about each of the four divisions, we're going to combine that information and show you guys really how that contributes to what we, what we report to the board and to our community <coughs> about the folks that we serve collectively. So combined, once you take all of the clients, the most common diagnosis over the last year has increased, uh, has been autism. It was autism last year, but the percentage has increased. So last year, 42% of the folks that we served had their primary diagnosis of autism. Intellectual disability comes in second at 34. Then cerebral palsy at 12%. Only 1% of our folks have epilepsy, and 11% have some other condition that qualifies for service. I should also say it's pretty common for folks in developmental disabilities to have multiple diagnoses. So somebody with an intellectual disability may also be diagnosed with autism and vice versa. This is just their primary diagnosis that makes them eligible for services. 49% of the folks served by UCP are under the age of 18, and that's because our respite department is so large. But you can see 17% of folks are ages 18 to 29, 10% are 30 to 39, and then we go up from there. Gender, 67% uh, of our folks are male. And you guys might be surprised by that, but there's actually a pretty simple explanation. Um, autism is much more frequent in male than female. So because we have such a high amount of folks with autism being male, it skews the gender generally for the average client at UCP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.